Hi, it's Phil Kerner, the Tool and Die Guy, with another lesson today. And uh, we're going to call this one a tool that I never saw before. And how to measure the depth of a keyway on a round shaft. And that's a follow-up to the previous lesson I did on how to machine a keyway. Now we need to learn how to measure it correctly. Okay, so, unbelievably, I've never seen one of these before. And it's actually quite humorous. Um, this very soft-spoken fellow at work, he's one of our engineering guys. He's not an intern anymore, but he went to college and everything. And apparently in one of his night classes or something, they made him make this thing. And he came up to me about a month ago, and he, I couldn't hear him. He's very soft-spoken. And he said something about an optical center punch. And the first thing that came to my head was, did somebody also send you the tool crib for a left-handed crescent wrench, all right, or a thread stretcher? Optical center punch. Well, he brought this in the other day, and that's what this is. It's called an optical center punch. So let's take a look at this thing. This is a homemade one. He's taking the time. It looks like we've got a nice little neural on there and everything. Um, first of all, as you see how this thing works, uh, well, let's go to the next picture. Um, you've got the center punch, and you've got the little magnifying glass here. With This one has a bullseye in the middle. And after you line up your scribe line, there's a, just a pencil one I did, and I'm sorry, it looks like it's a little off-center. It's very tough to get that picture, but you've got a bullseye in there. And then what you do is remove the magnifying glass, take the punch, put it back in the hole, and give it a tap. Well, okay, interesting. Uh, when I started out in the trade, um, I did a lot of center punching uh, at Anson Tools and Gauges. They'd have us work on these little uh, wear plates and things like that that were non-critical, and we'd lay them out and center punch them and use the center drill to pick them up and drill the holes, clearance holes for bolts usually, okay? Well, after I posted this photo on Facebook and Instagram, uh, I had a couple of people that immediately identified this as an optical center punch, and I know you're thinking, the tool and die guy doesn't know what an optical center punch is. Well, at first it sound, sounded like an oxymoron. Why would you ever want to get a center punched hole that tight? Um, because I always assume center punch holes are plus or minus 15 because they're bolt clearance. But I think there's people out there that uh, believe this can get them a lot closer. So a little variation on that, and here's some history for you. Uh, this very cool uh, Starrett uh, number 815 uh, toolmaker's hammer. And this is a really cool piece. Uh, this is my actually my brothers. I have two of these, my brothers and my fathers. Um, they still make these. Uh, the, it's got a magnifying glass right here with an O-ring. So when you uh, hit your center punch, after you find the location with the magnifying glass, you don't crack the glass. Pretty ingenious, right? This one's really cool. Um, Fred Kerner Jr. Now, they didn't do that on a pantograph. I have a very strong suspicion that back in the 60s, Starrett ran a um, promotion. I mean, if you buy the center punch hammer or, or something else, they're throwing this in with your name on it. Because this is very deep and very professionally done, like something like Starrett would do. Uh, it's really well done, and it's after all these years, 50, 60 years, the black is still in those letters. It just doesn't seem like a pantograph job. They would have done a current tool and die, and the one I have at work is the exact same thing, except it says Fritz in the middle, same type of block lettering. Uh, so I, I have a feeling this came from the stair company, but that's the alternative I would have used to really get tight on a center punch mark. Well, if you guys are really interested, uh, number one, uh, Starrett still makes these. I'm always amazed at the things that Starrett still makes um, this toolmaker's hammer in there. As you can see, 9450 at this is, I believe, a pen tool company. Uh, it's a really great conversation piece and, and everything, but I never use mine anymore. It's just a really good conversational piece, but because um, I don't believe we center punch that much anymore, but we'll get into that. The reality is, uh, is that I never again, as I said, believed that center punching was the most accurate way to do things, but I've been uh, taking the task for that uh, nicely on Instagram and Facebook. So here's my deal. If I didn't have, see, and here's, here's what I'm going at. I've been running CNC machines since 19, uh, 1986, 30, 33 years now, right? And uh, my center punches got put away a long time ago. And also my, did my transfer punches and my transfer screws. And I know that a lot of you uh, folks who listen to me uh, don't have a CNC machine and don't plan on getting one soon because I know a lot of you folks are uh, hobbyists and working out of your garage and just trying to make things uh, work. And uh, here's my uh, question about this thing, or any center punch, right? Let's say I, I just sketched up these two plates, one inch thick, six inches long, and it can be as however wide as you want of it. And you want to you want to put a dowel pin here, half inch dowel pin through these two plates. Oh, got the uh, Winchester clock going in the background. Uh, just part of the charm of the studio here. So 
we've got uh, these two plates, and I want to, and they've already been finished on the on the edges. So now I want to make sure that I get this dowel pin lined up through these two holes. Now I'm assuming you have a, dr a, a bridge port, right? Wouldn't you just clamp these two plates together on a surface plate so these two edges are perfectly uh, flat and then uh, you know lined, and then gently put it in your vise, use an edge finder, move over an inch, and do them together. That's the best way to ensure you won't have a mismatch. So when you put the two plates together, you've got a step here. Okay, that's how I used to do these things. But I had to do it this way. So again, back to the optical center punch. My big question is, okay, so we we go through and we line this thing up. We're on our target here. Now I've got to pull the magnifying glass out, insert the punch, and hope nothing moves. All right. Uh, You've, you've, uh, you've removed the magnifying glass and when he gave me this originally it was too tight so I reamed everything out for him so at least the stuff slides in and out and then put the center punch in and hit it and nothing moves not quite there on that one either again this is just me I'm sure there's people out here who have great success with that and uh, finally though well, now you've got this perfect center punch mark how are you going to pick it up well probably with a wiggler and again you know I love my wiggler too uh and I, and I know it picks up probably within a couple thousandths, but uh, I had somebody say they, they can line these things up within a couple tenths using an optical comparator or an optical center punch. I think the verdict is out on that one. But that's just me. I'm just the messenger here. Uh, don't shoot me. I would uh, buy one of these. As, as I said, they're, uh, the optical center punches are still available online for about 50, 60 bucks if you really want one. They're pretty cool looking, I will say that. But I think they, in, in, my, in my toolbox, they'd end up as another great conversational piece. So I uh, hope you enjoyed that little trip down memory lane, and let's get started with today's lesson. In our previous lesson, we talked about machining this keyway in uh, at a specific angle in relationship to this flat. And I told you on the last lesson that I was going to uh, show you how to measure the depth of that keyway. Now, there's a lot of different ways to do it, and um, I think the one I'm going to show you is probably the most repeatable and the most accurate. And again, um, this is my idea. Uh, if you have a better one, please share it with us. And uh, I have no problem with that. But, you know, uh, it's a little tough to measure. And you know about the extra slot. Okay, that's another story. But um, a little tough to catch the top of this and drop an indicator in there. Now, if you have a thin point and you find the bottom of it, it'll work, uh, a drop indicator, right? So you'd have to find the center of this, make sure this is indicated perfectly straight, and find the depth from the top of the shaft down to the bottom of the keyway. Well, there's a much easier way to do that, and I'm going to switch over to AutoCAD right now and show you how I do this, and it repeats every time, and uh, you'll have a little tool to use in the future also. So let's get started with that. So here we are in AutoCAD, and here's a, a little sketch of this shaft, okay? So the small diameter where the keyway is located is 623 thousandths in diameter. You can see there's the keyway depth of 111 thousandths, and I actually get 5 thousandths on that. It's 111 plus 5 minus nothing. So we kind of shoot for maybe 113, okay? So um, here's the secret here. See this little disc down here? So this is a 5 16th ejector pin. And uh, I cut it off a little thicker than an eighth of an inch and then ground it to about 123 thousandths thickness. You don't want to press this thing in here. You don't want to get stuck, right? So uh, this needs to slide in there. So let's see how we're going to measure. You're going to see this, right? You get it. So if I select this and hit uh, move, and hopefully this all works right. There we go. Grab that tangent point and find the bottom of the radius right there. Now all we have to do, can I get rid of that? Uh, keyboards, key, key cuts don't work when I'm recording. So all we have to do though, simply is measure over the disc and the shaft. And it's 823 thousandths. And there you have it. Very accurate way to check that. Now, this disc I made was a bit of a pain, right? You got a 5 16th ejector pin and you're cutting this thing off and it's extremely thin and uh, to not lose it when you cut it off. And then I put it up in a grinder and I'll show you two pictures then right now. Uh, one is how I had to grind this thing. You know, when you put something small on your magnet, 
there's not a lot of magnetism there, right? There's just not enough uh, surface area for the magnet to really grab it. So I block it up uh, with uh, some thin parallels, and then I'll show you another picture in a second after that of what it looks like when I'm measuring over that. So as again, I already said, uh, this is how I do it. Uh, I have seen our QC department do some crazy things to try to measure uh, keyway depths like this. This is works the best in my opinion. I've seen them pour wax in there and try to put it on the comparator. I don't trust the wax stuff. I mean, I know they got to do it sometimes, but this is a hard dimension guaranteed to put you in the right place. So I hope you found that informative. Uh, time to wrap this up tonight. As you may or may not know, I, I got my hands on this beautiful 1935 Starrett Tools Catalog and uh, scanned through 17 of these awesome illustrations and drawings from 1935 and restored every one of them and turned it into a really cool wall calendar for the man cave for over your bench. The only one like it. Nobody else produces a calendar like this every year. And I am also throwing in this 14 by, uh, I'm sorry, 16 by 20 ready to frame Lufkin Tools 1947 skeleton view of a set of micrometers, everything for under 20 bucks, including shipping. So if you're interested, just head on over. It's that time of the year to get those Christmas gifts for that craftsman in your family, right? The toolanddieguy.com. Just click on the 2020 calendar link. You can't miss it. I'm Phil Kerner, the Tool and Die Guy, and we'll see you on the next lesson. Mm -hmm.